Hey guys, welcome back to the Knitting Expat Podcast. My name is Mina and this is going to be a spinning vlog slash DIY slash let's go on this adventure together. <laughs> and if you've clicked on this video, you've probably seen the title and yes, so I'll talk about that a little bit first before I tuck into this. Um, so for a while now, I've been thinking about um, potentially getting a blending board and the reasoning behind that was a few things. One, I have zero tools to prep fiber other than my hands, essentially. <laughs> I have nothing else I can do to sort of prep or manipulate the fiber into different preparations. And um, I really enjoy spinning from Rolex, really, really enjoy spinning from Rolex. So I thought blending board would be great because that's the primary tool that you use to make Rolex other than hand carders. I'm not particularly interested in getting hand carders. Just, um, I've heard from some people that the repetitive motion with the carders can like hurt your wrists or your arms and stuff. And I'm, I'm just like, I'm not interested in that necessarily. Plus, um, with a blending board, I feel like, at least for me, the things that I'm interested in, it offers um, potential to do other things with it as well. Like you can make roving with it, you can make little mini bats with it. So yeah, anyway, I'm just, always been interested in that idea and then I looked around I was looking online and everywhere that sells blending boards they're really expensive I'm not saying they're not worth it but they are quite expensive but I found um, wing and wool works in the UK and I know there's a few sellers in the US that do this as well but wing and wool works in the UK actually just sell the carding cloth on its own the bit that is stuck on the blending board that does the blending so I've ordered that and I have some of the other supplies that I need to be able to make it myself. And I figured out the cost. Even buying the carding cloth, which is quite expensive on its own, um, it still saves me almost 50% overall over buying a blending board brand new uh, from even Wing and Woolworks themselves. And, um, and yeah, so for a 50% saving, an almost 50%, I think it works out to be like 40 45% saving or something, which is crazy over buying an Ashford blending board, which is the easiest one I can find in the UK. Hello, little girl. <laughs> Someone's going to say hi. And, um, and yes, yeah, so I thought, well, why not DIY one myself? And actually the saving would have been more if I didn't have to buy a staple gun. I had to buy, I had to buy a staple gun because I don't have one and no one I know around me has one that I can borrow. So um, if I didn't have to buy a staple gun, it would have been even cheaper. Um, I think the staple gun costs like £12, so it'll be useful for other projects, but um, anyway, rambling. Uh, so I'm still waiting for the carding cloth to show up, so I haven't actually been able to make the blending board yet. But I also decided I wanted to get some different colours of wool and stuff to have on hand to be able to play around with and uh, to play around with the blending board when it arrived. Hello Hugo, you want me to say hello? Yeah, you can say hi to everyone. People people miss seeing you um and i know i have a bunch of fibers and stuff fiber and stuff already in my stash i have a lot of bats and braids and roving and top and all sorts of things but some of a lot of those have been earmarked for other projects a lot of them you know have been beautifully created by uh fiber artists and i don't really want to undo their work as it were um just to experiment with so i wanted to get some fiber to play around with with making row lags and other things and just experimenting with and i figured i saved so much money on buying a blending board by making it myself that i can say spend some of that on uh, fiber and there's also fiber for a couple of other projects i'm not sure if it's in this bundle or that's coming with the carding cloth um but anyway so this was an order i placed with um world of wool i think yeah this is from world of wool and <laughs> After I placed the order, it was actually, it wasn't too expensive for the quantity of wool that I got, which is good. Um, but when I sat down to calculate how much wool I'd actually, uh, fiber I'd actually ordered, it's like one and a half kilos. <laughs> it's quite a lot. And um, yeah, fingers crossed, if this goes well, and I get the hang of the whole making Rolex thing, I'll be able to make up some Rolex as prizes for the spin and make along, which would be really fun. I'm not planning on like starting up a shop or anything, making Rolags and stuff, but never say never. 
but it's just not my intention right now to do that but i'll do it for like prices and stuff i think that'll be quite fun all right you gonna let me do this hey someone's molting just spin your fiber this is what i mean by hugo is like his, he looks really dark, but his hair is actually really light underneath. Um, it's only grey at the tips, so that's why when you pull his fur back, it just looks really white underneath. Because it is white underneath, isn't it, buddy? I also collect your fur and Derek's fur and <laughs> blend it with some merino or something and try spinning it. I might actually do that. It'd be interesting to see what cat fur is like spun up. Hey, you're very soft. You and your brother are very soft. All right, let's open this up and see what we got. Hey, back up. I don't want to stick these whiskers. Yeah, are you interested? You want to help me? Layla's not here today, so you're going to help me. Hey. Can you help me pull out the fibre? Jeez, if Layla was here, she'd have had a field day with this. I do actually have other fibres that I've purchased, <laughs> not for this purpose, but just in general for spinning, uh, before I finally decided to pull the trigger and do this, um, that has arrived, I have a big bag of it. It's from like a few weeks worth of orders, which is still terrible. Um, but I'm waiting for one day when I have Layla around to do the, to do like the unboxing or like, review, I guess, of those fibers um, for you guys, because I know you guys all value her opinion so much. Okay, so let's see what we got here. So I, I got two 100 gram tops. Um, actually, no, one is top and one is roving. The top is Rambouillet and the, the roving is Corridel. It's nothing really special to see, it's just white. And I bought these to use as like base fibers for blending other colors with if I wanted some white to mix in there. And also just because I really like spinning Corridel and Rambouillet, so why not? those two all right okay this is getting very um distracting to say the least i love you and everything but you want to sit on my lap how's that let me move back a bit come down here okay then i got one of these um they call them breed discovery packs from world of wool so there's eight 25 gram samples of uh different breeds of wool so there's an 18 and a half micron merino, a 23 micron merino, um, a BFL, a Shetland, um, Jacob, Devon, Swaledale, and Herdwick. It's all in different natural colours. I'm not sure how well you can see that. Let me just I don't want to take these all out of their packaging right now, especially with Hugo around, but you can see all the natural colours in there, which is really beautiful. And the Jacob is that black one at the bottom, which is quite cool. This one I'm really excited about. I bought, they have the, these little packs of like mixed uh, different uh, colours of merino. And again, all 25 grams of each colour. It's a really good size it, because with Worlds of Wool and a lot of these other ones where you're ordering online, you can only buy by like per 100 grams and it might not be that expensive but I don't want 100 grams of 10 different colours I just want little bits of each colour so I can play around with them on the blending board so I got one of their summer holiday colour packs which I thought was really fun really nice bright summery colours reminds me of like seasides and picnics and parks and stuff like that so I thought this would be really fun to do some um, Rolex with um, and then Along the same lines, I got one of their autumn autumn leaves packs, mixed merino bags. Again, really lovely autumnal colours that I really love. And I thought those would be really fun to work with. And I also got one of their, um, I think, I'm not sure, I need to double check. I think this is Corridor. I'm not sure. I should have to check this one online because it doesn't look like the merino, but it's what they call their uh, woodland creatures mixed bag. It's all sort of natural colours, like earthy colours in there as well. Again, I thought that'd be quite nice mixing in with some of these other ones to create some fun 
Rolex list. So again, these were just to have lots of little bits of different colors to be able to play around with and come up with different combinations and things. Um, and yeah, I think this might be Corydell because they do roving as well, but the only roving they do is Corydell. So I think this might be Corydell. I need to double check that online to see for sure. Then I got, ah, okay. So yeah, I think it is Corydell because this, this one I know is definitely Cor Corydell. They have a range called Galaxy Melange mix, um, Galaxy Melange, which is like basically dyed um, Corydell roving and this is just a mixed bag so again a little sample of each color which i thought just fun to work with have different colors on hand and i think again it's all 25 grams of each sorry the people upstairs are moving furniture around so you might be able to hear that um so yeah i just got lots of fun colors to play around with i didn't i realized after i ordered that i didn't actually buy any uh things like like silks or different add-ins like bamboo or whatever that you can add in like angelina things like that that you can typically add into these things i'm not too worried about that right now i know we can get that sort of stuff later but i just wanted to play around with the techniques and learning a bit about how to use a blending board and then the last thing i got was um they just had like a lucky dip bag which was relatively inexpensive and i thought hey why not i always seem to gravitate towards like specific colors that i really like and I find it hard to go outside my comfort zone. So these sorts of mixed bags, grab bag type things are quite good for that. And I might come, and yeah, there's definitely stuff in here that I probably wouldn't have picked out on my own, but I'm interested to see what they're like. So there's a bunch of stuff in here. There's some Tweedy, uh, tweedy fibers. There's some naturals, which I think I think some of these might be plant fibers. There's definitely some animal fibers. This one I did see online, this red one, has some flax in it, which is quite cool. Um, yeah, there's all sorts in here. I'm gonna have to go on their website and have a little look around to see if I can figure out what each of these are. Um, but yeah, so that will also be quite fun to play around, play around with as well. So pretty much all of these are little 25 gram samples of all these different fibers, which I'm really looking forward to playing with at some point. Um, so yeah. A lot of fibre, a lot of fun to be had here, and I think this is going to be um, a good time. <laughs> okay, well that's it for this little fibre haul segment before the blending board action starts. But I will be also recording, uh, you'll see, it's going to be coming up after this. Um, I'll be making the blending board and then playing around with it, and I will share that experience with you all as well. See you in a little bit. Um, I say that, it will only be a couple of seconds for you, but uh, to be honest, I'm not sure when I'm going to be filming the next sections, just because I'm waiting for that carding cloth to arrive still, and it might be a couple of days, maybe even next week before I get to recording it. So to me, it'll be a few days, but I will see you soon. I just had a thought. These little mixed bags, the way I think of them, these little mixed bags of colours or fibres, like 25 grams each, they're basically spinners mini skeins. They're like the mini skeins for spinners. Oh, perfect hi guys welcome back so it is now the next day i showed you guys the wool uh fiber that i ordered that came yesterday um, so i've already shown you that thankfully i didn't have to wait long for the rest of the supplies to show up because it turned up this morning um so really quickly just wanted to show you what i got to make my diy blending board um So I've just got a cutting board. This is a bamboo cutting board. Um, I didn't have anything already that I was willing to give up using. We only have two cutting boards that we use all the time. So um, I did buy one for it, but if you have something already, then that's fine. And this one's great because it's got these little rubber stoppy things on the back. So it supposedly shouldn't slide around too much. But when Perry gets back from his trip, if I feel like I need it, I can get him to uh, make me a little stand thing so it can stand at an angle if I wanted it to. Um, but yeah, apparently it's got a footed grip so it prevents it from sliding around. Obviously it still has the plastic cover on it. I did say I had to buy a staple gun. Um, if you didn't have to buy a staple gun then that would save you some money on this as well. Um, and then also we don't uh, basically got a pet grooming brush, one of these like slicker brushes. Um, buying an actual like specific for a blending board brush 
is some it's like close to 20 pounds it's a bit ridiculous whereas one of these is like four pounds so um i've got one of these the only thing is because of the direction of the bristles on this you just have to use it opposite way i'll show you later i've watched a lot of videos about this online and um and yeah so the only thing i'm missing is the carding cloth i do have some old say old um but actually they're my very first set of knitting needles that i learned to knit with uh, they're just like long straight needles that i'm going to use as dowels which i forgot to bring upstairs with me so i'll go grab them in a second and um and yeah so anyway so that's this is the stuff i got i also got some paint brushes because i've seen specific with certain types of fibers when you're putting them on the blending board you don't necessarily want to brush them down you kind of just want to like pat them into the bristles the tines on the blending board so paintbrush is good for that so i've just got a cheap paintbrush this might not be any good but um that's what i had on hand so those are those supplies that i got and now to open up the package that arrived this morning there's a couple of other things in here as well so i'll just show you what i got so i ordered this from uh, wing and wall works they they were the only place in the UK that I was able to find um, carding cloth for a reasonable price for the dimensions that I was looking for. Right, so my phone just rang and I had to go answer that. And um, so I just took the opportunity to go downstairs and grab the knitting needles I was telling you about. So these are nine millimeter or US 13s, just wooden straight knitting needles. These are the ones I learned to knit with. So they're very nostalgic and I'll just be using these as the dowels for pulling the roll legs off the blending board. Right, so onto the things that I bought. Um, so one thing that I got was actually 200 grams of um, Superwash Polworth Nylon. I think that's what it was. Just check there. Yeah, Superwash Polworth and Nylon um, because Ah. I have a bunch of, um, what's the word, food dyes, food colouring, um, the <clears throat> Wilton's food dyes, the gel ones are like quite potent, um, so what I'm thinking of doing at some point this summer is having Layla help me dye this um, top, I think it's top, um, and then because it's super wash I thought I'm less likely to ruin it. And also, it's superwash nylon blend, so I thought I could spin these for socks. And it's Polworth, and I really enjoy spinning Polworth. So I've never tried spinning superwash yarn, fibre, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes as well. But I picked up 200 grams of that to play with, with um, play with dyeing it with Layla later this year. Um, and so, onto the main thing. I actually got two things, two other things. I got a larger Nitty Noddy, which is something I've been meaning to get for a while, but I was waiting until there was something else I wanted to get before ordering it. So this is the, um, I think it's the 72 inch Nitty Noddy. So it's one size bigger than the one I currently have. Um, and I wanted to get this mainly because when I spin larger quantities of yarn, I find it really hard to wind them off onto the Nitty Noddy I have because it's so small and I find the fibre, the yarn just keeps falling off the edges. So I wanted a larger one for like bigger skeins and the smaller one is good for like 50 grams or smaller skeins of yarn. So there's that. And um, this is the main thing I've been waiting for. And that's this, uh, this is the carding cloth. So I'm just gonna open it up. Of cutting cloth. So, yeah. I'll make sure, yeah, this way. And that's what that looks like. And so that should fit nicely on the board. There we go. A little bit of overlap around the sides, but that's actually pretty good. Good fit. And um, yeah. So I'm just going to tidy up a little bit unwrap all the bits and then we'll get to putting this together and see how it goes so we have the chopping board here and these rubber bits actually work really well like it really doesn't move that much at all when put the pressure on it trying to move it which is great then i'm going to pop this 
check the direction is right. Yep, that way onto the chopping board. And I leave a bit of room at the bottom here because this is where the fluff will come off the bottom. Just line that up, it doesn't have to be precise. And then we're gonna start stapling this down. I've loaded up the staple gun. It seems to be working, so we'll see how this goes. Yeah. The blending board is all set up and ready to go. It's all stapled down. It's nice and secure. And um, yeah, let's get to it. So I've grabbed the little grab bag of um, like a Lucky Dip bag of fiber. And I'm gonna dig into this and see, see what we can come up with. I have no idea what some of these fibers are. I didn't actually get round to going online to find out what's in them. Thinking. Oh, it's out. Ooh, probably wearing knitwear while doing this isn't the best idea. I think this is some kind of silk. This feels very silky. It could be bamboo or silk. I'm not super familiar with these fibers in their raw form to be able to know the difference. This, no idea what this is. This feels really soft. either some sort of like llama or alpaca no idea I know this one has some flax in it and uh, I think this is just some merino I wish they were labeled <laughs> I really do but it was it was a lucky dip and it was always going to be a random selection um, and like I said I'm not super familiar with these fibers yet to know the differences between them to be able to recognize them based on just looking and touching i think this one might actually have something blended with it like some silk or bamboo um all right and there's some glittery ones summery ones there's all sorts in here so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna have some fun i think i want to stick with the natural colors just to begin with i'll probably just stick with these ones for now and um Let's see what we can do. This is my absolute first time trying to use this blending board to make Rolex. It will probably be a disaster, <laughs> but at least we'll be on this journey together. And um, yeah, let's see what we can make.
time for the moment of truth. Let's see if we can do this. My very first row lag. That will focus, that'd be great, wouldn't it? There we go. How cool is that? I say I mainly, I only stuck, uh, used fibers from this little special edition Lucky Dip mix bag that I got from World of Wool. Um, just because I wanted to play, I bought this bag specifically to use as like my first go playing around and stuff because the others I bought and I have ideas for what I might want to try and do with them, like these other more colorful fibers. And I didn't want to use up the colors on like practice stuff before I figured out what I might want to do so anyway all that to say I was using some of these and still obviously a lot of fibre left and um, and yeah so and these were all 25 grams each so there was 10 little 25 gram bundles in there so first off we made the Rolex or I made the say we I made the Rolex it's a bit squished now but um, and that was the main reason for getting blending board was to be able to make Rolex because I really enjoy spinning from them it's trying to focus on my face. Come on. There we go. Um, was to make these Rolex because I really enjoy spinning from them. Then I um, tried out making some little roving nests. So I can just the same. I didn't film all of these bits. I'll probably do other videos, little like how tos um, at some point if you want. I still obviously need to improve, but um, I just drafted the fiber onto the board as I did with the Rolex. And then um, I don't actually have a diz, and to make roving, I think technically you need a diz, but uh, you can use anything with a small hole. So I just used the little hole on the end of the paintbrush to pull the fibre through and use that to diz it off into little nests. Um, and there is a way that you can do it to get continuous roving, but um, I, I was happy to just get these little nests because I find that it's easier to manage them when you're spinning anyway. 
And then finally, and the one that I was quite excited to try, and I haven't really seen people do this, but I, I don't know, maybe people do do this, I just haven't seen it, but um, I saw a video about someone doing this for felting, and I was like, well, why wouldn't you be able to do it for spinning? So I just made a little mini bat, and it's already poofed up a lot since I pulled it off the, pulled it off the blending board, because it's poofed out width-wise. But, um, but yeah, really excited with that. It's got different layers on it. It's white underneath and layered in. There's some darker colors layered in there as well. So um, this would be interesting to see. And it's really light and airy and poofy. I don't have my scales up here, so I'm not entirely sure how much this weighs, but I'd be, I'm interested to find out the weight of this bat um, because I really packed on what I felt was a lot of fiber and I think probably could have gotten more on the blending board if I tried but um, I kind of just stopped at this point but I'd say there's definitely at least there's at least 25 grams in there if not more so um, cute little mini bat how adorable is that so these are just like three things I could do straight on a blending board which are which is great actually it's a very versatile uh, piece of equipment and being able to make it yourself makes it much more cost effective as well so um, I'm excited to play around with this a bit more and to see what else I can come up with. So I think I'm going to leave it at that for this video. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you find this useful. And if you'd like to see more uh, videos slash how to's, I, I don't really want to call them tutorials because I'm obviously not an expert at this. Literally my first time trying with all of these, um, but kind of like want me to share like how I am doing it if you're interested as well I mean I showed you how I put it all together it was just stapling the carding cloth to a chopping board it wasn't complicated um, I will if I can remember I will leave a link down below to where I got the carding cloth from and everything else I pretty much either bought it in person from a shop local to me or on Amazon um, and I will also leave a link to World of Wool as well, which is where I bought a lot of, well, all the fibre from. And I'm trying to think what else I could leave links to. I think those are the main things. I'll leave links to those. And um, I'll also, if I, again, if I remember, I will try and leave links to a couple of places that sell this carding cloth um, in, in the US as well. As, and there's one place actually I found in the Netherlands, which was really good, and they actually sold the kit. It was the carbon cloth with a slicker brush and the dowels, and then you just had to get your own board, which I would have done actually, but uh, shipping was expensive to the UK. So I think if you're in Europe, it would be cheaper. So I will leave a link to that one as well if I can find the page. Otherwise, I think that's it for today, or this video anyway. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will, I will see you again soon. All right, take care, bye.